Welcome to April's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is count binary substrings. It's actually a question from two days ago. You can see I missed it. Oh no, but what are you gonna do? So here's the question. Given a string S, count the number of non-empty contiguous substrings that have the same number of zeros and ones. And all the zeros and ones in these strings are grouped consecutively. What that means is we had an example like this. We have six consecutive, or six binary substrings. We have one, two, we can count for three, four, and then five, six. And as you can see, we have all those strings and we want to return the number of them. Um, so they give you a hint here where they say, well, how many binary, binary substrings are in 000111? And it's kind of a silly hint, but I think what they're trying to get you to realize is with an example like this, we have to make sure that we only have consecutive zeros and ones and depending on how many they exist on either side that's going to be the number of consecutive binary substrings we can have so here we know that we have three here we know we have two because this is going to be um, only two of these are going to be able to be counted for like so when I first saw this question I thought maybe it's some sort of queue or stack solution uh, what I thought maybe we can do is if we had this example here, we can have a queue and add to this queue whatever character that we have. So we start with zeros. And as soon as we see that our character is not the same as uh, the one at the end, we could just pop that one off. We'll add the one to the left, we'll pen left, and we'll pop this one off and increase our counter by one. So now we've kind of accounted for like this substring here. So next we have another one. So we can see that the very last one is not a one. So we can pop that off. And now we can increase our counter to two. Uh, now we have these zeros to count for. We can see the same thing occurring. Just pop that off here. And each time we're going to increase this up until we end our substring. So it ends with something like that. Uh, now that will work. Uh, but we have to have some sort of while loop to account for, say that we had like a bunch of zeros in the beginning. What might happen then is we have like, five ones, we add one here, pop this one off, add one here, pop this one off. Uh, but now we have more zeros to come, right? So this makes it seem like we can't account for it, but it's really not the case. We just need to pop these three off. So really when we find that our character is equal to the one at the end and not equal to the one at the beginning, we can just pop these all off because those can never be accounted for given that they need to be consecutive. So what we might be able to do is create a queue here We'll say for character in S. Let's see. We'll first have our while loop to pop off. Uh, while there's a Q, and the very last one in this Q, uh, if it equals the character that we have, and the very first one also, or the very first one, I should say, right here, does not equal the character that we have, then we know that we can't account for these, so we'll just pop them all off. Now, if we, there's a Q, and the very last one is not equal to the character that we have, then we will pop this one off. Oops. And we'll increase our output by one. And let's set up our output up here. Now finally, we just get through our loop and we just return our output. And that should take care of everything. Let's see if this works. Hmm, Q and negative one is like C. If Q, negative one is not equal. What? Oh, of course. I need to add it. A pen left character. Okay, so this should return three. It does. Let's go ahead and submit that. And this does work. And I believe time complexity wise, even though there, there's a while loop, it's kind of like a sliding window. So this does end up being O of N, but we can actually do better than this. Uh, we don't actually need to account for each one of these. What we might be able to do instead is um, whenever we see that the numbers have flip-flopped, we basically like say we have these two groups here. We have two ones and five zeros, right? Well, between these two, we can only account for these two ones. So it's really the minimum between these two that we can add to our output. Once we uh, find that the numbers have flip flopped again, we can just forget about this whole thing here. Like this doesn't matter to us anymore because now it's only these ones that we can account for. Those zeros 
um, from the you know earlier, those are irrelevant. Uh, so to do that, what we might do instead is let's first initialize the length of s, and we'll have two variables. We'll have the previous and the current. Now the previous basically represents the previous group, the number of zeros or ones we had in our previous group, and the current we start off with one because we know that at the very least the length will be one. So uh, what we'll do is say for i in range of one through n. We will, well, we'll have to check a couple things. If this does not equal the one before, that basically means we need to increase our output by the minimum between the current and previous. Now, since uh, we know that there's been a flip, from zeros and ones, we need to reset then our previous to now equal current, and current will we'll set it reset back to one. Now, otherwise, we'll just increase our current plus equal one, and that should be it. Except the very last group here, we had like zero zero one one zero zero one one. Like this algorithm will only account for like this and then this, but we'll kind of not be able to account for this because we don't add to our output. Um, because there's no flip-flop, right? So to take care of that, we'll also add uh, to the min, the min between the previous and current here. And that should work also. In fact, this is probably better. It's gonna be, oh, hmm. That's weird. Previous currents. Oh, okay, what am I doing here? I was one, okay. Okay, so let's submit that. And this is also O of n time, but it's just faster because we don't need to be popping off of our queue or anything. Uh, really, the approach is the same. It's just one, we had a queue to kind of keep track of that sliding window. But here, once we realize, we don't even need to really account for every pop, whatever. We just need to keep track of how many uh, zeros there were previously and ones that we have right now. So that's it. Okay, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.